You're listening to the Never Heard of It podcast, a Night Shift Radio original. Every week we bring you the good, the bad, the weird, and lesser known streaming movies. Hit subscribe for new episodes every Thursday and Sunday. So Caleb, yes, I'm in a little bit of trouble. Oh? Yes. I, uh, as you know, I have brought this up to you before. Uh, I am playing the new uh, Marvel app, Marvel Snap. Oh, that's right. You have told me. I downloaded that. I haven't I haven't started playing it yet, but on the iPad that you see behind me, it is present. I so I'm addicted, right? I I love I love trading card games and, and like card games like this. Mm-hmm, you know, mm-hmm. I, I played Yu-Gi-Oh! for a really long time, you don't played Pokemon say. for a while. You don't <laughs> say, right. I do say. Ah. Um and uh I love the game. It's great. Okay. You know, there's a lot of things that I love about it. One you know, as much as you can build like a really good deck, you're very beholden to RNG because um, you get there's like three locations and the locations are randomized. Okay. And each one either gives a bonus or a detriment. So like they either give or take away a thing. Sure. So your deck could be built out to like a perfect strategy, but if you don't, you know, if you don't get the right locations, which which hurt or benefit both of you, you know, e- each player. Uh, you, you know, your deck, it, it, it isn't like you can't trap people, you know, like the biggest issue with things like Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh, magic is that you get these sort of solitaire loop decks that just shut people out, yeah, right? Yeah, I hate that shit. And that sucks. It sucks playing against those sort of things. And that happens in a lot of TCGs. Um, but uh, Marvel Snap doesn't really have that ability as of yet. There hasn't been a deck that can do that okay. because everything is randomized. Um, so I love that. And I also love that there's no restrictions to how much you can play. Mm. So there's like energy in games. Like you, you've you played those sort of app games yeah. where they're like, you get X number of energy and you have to refill the energy and that's the only way to play a game. Either like wait or pay. Or pay. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Marvel Snap, there's not that. Nice. You can literally just play the game forever if you want. Um, there is like a ranking system where you gain and lose points, but like you could go down to zero and it doesn't matter. So, you know, it's just sort of like you get more bonuses, you know, the higher you rank and the more you get, but you could just play infinitely. And I love that. I love that. That is a, that is a huge thing for me. Yeah. Um, in games because I hate when games restrict how much I can play. Yeah, that's, I mean, what is, I mean, I know what the point is. The point is to to get you hooked and get you to, to spend money. But like, all you're doing is alienating the people who just really want to play your game. Yes, and 100%. Like, I just, I, I wish, and I mean, this, we, we have to go back a few decades to correct this error really at this <laughs> point. But like, I wish we hadn't decided that everything should be free to the point where the only way to like make money on the internet is like they're like ads or, or microtransactions because that's now like the gaming experience is completely ruined by ads and microtransactions. Like I've been playing hundred percent. Uh, I don't even fucking know what it's called to be honest with you. It's like a, a bullet hell style, like, uh, like, um, space shooter, kind of like a Galaga knockoff, but like modernized. Okay. Honestly, like, yeah, it doesn't even show the name on the the app. Um, (laughs) And it's one of those things where, like, you know, in in between levels, you can upgrade your ship with a, like, you get coins, but you also get uh, medals and you get jewels and there's puzzle pieces. Like, there's like 900 different interactions that you can do that all involve either microtransactions or micro, microtransactions or sitting through ads in order to upgrade your ships to like you know progress through the levels. Uh, and what I appreciate is kind of like what you were saying with with Marvel Snap is I could just play indefinitely, and that's part of the reason why I haven't started playing Marvel Snap yet is because I just start fucking around with this shooter game. And then I just kind of do that until I'm bored and then I put it away. Uh, and you can yeah. do that until you till you hit a wall and then like, you know, I have to go and upgrade and then you can go back and you can do it's like normal elite and veteran. So there's three levels for each each world or whatever, you know, three three um, you know, gameplay difficulties and then there's the like you get one, two, or three stars for your performance on it, that kind one of thing. One of those, yeah. Uh, and mm-hmm. that's great, but, like, you you hit a certain point where, like, you, there's just so many things on the screen that are trying to get your attention to either watch an ad or pay money for something. It's like, why? Why did you build out nine different ra- ways for me to, to upgrade and then not explain any of them? 
quite honestly. Like it's yeah. it's pretty straightforward when you see the options available to upgrade via the coins or the jewels. And like coins you get a lot of throughout the game. Jewels are limited, but you can use them when you run out of coin. Like okay, but, but for then, real money you can yep. And then like in the the different levels there, like you can swap different ship types. Like it'll drop like a power up that'll be a, a different ship type. You swap into that as long as it's one that you like have already unlocked, you can use it. And then you get like rank ups for your your weapons. All right, that's all cool, but there's like three other different power up types that drop throughout the game that like don't have any noticeable effect. Um, Interesting. And like there's nothing that explains what they do, and there's puzzle pieces that you can collect, but it's not clear what they do. I think they're used for upgrading ships, but it's not explained. Uh, And it's also the kind of thing where like the enemies that you face could take several hits, but you are always a one hit kill. And I, like it's maddening to me. It's a terrible game. And so I, like Galaga, I, yeah, yeah. And I, I don't know why I keep playing it. It's a terrible game. <laughs> we have to sit through ads. No ads in Marvel Snap. Yeah, just saying. Yeah, it's true. And sure. like, even the fucking solitaire game that I play because I downloaded a free solitaire game. They like you can pay. I got it. Some stupid like ten bucks or something like that. I'm like, I'm sorry, I'm not paying ten dollars for solitaire. Um, if it yeah. was like two dollars, I would actually consider doing the like pay to get rid of ads uh, yeah. because they're annoying. Like you know, you hit new game and you have to sit through a fucking Ebony the King's Return ad, and like <laughs> I want like. Raid. Find me the company behind Ebony the King's Return so that I can ask them, how much money do I have to pay you to never see an ad from you again? <laughs> to never see it. Like, oh, there should be like those in- those like tokens where if they it like checks your device and says like, oh, you have this. We're not gonna advertise I, it to yeah, you. Yeah, I mean if that were like if that were true, then like I I would download all of these games and just put them in a folder and just like ignore yep. them. <laughs> Just so you wouldn't have to deal with them anymore. Yeah, yeah. Like even if you just like you know, like some sort of like cookie tracking that like tracks that like you click to the get button and it takes you to the app store. Like even if you didn't install it, um, because yeah. that showed that you acknowledged the ad, which was kind you're of, like fine. I downloaded your thing. Kind of yeah. the point. I just you know yeah. I don't I don't know, man. I don't I don't know. And before someone in the comments is like, oh, use an ad blocker. No, like that's just. It's that's an extra level of crap. Also, I work in the technology sector, and those things can uh, more often than not cause more problems than they're worth with the type of work that I do. Uh, and so, just you know, like I'll deal with the ads; they just they annoy me. And at a certain point, you realize that, like, you know, th- this their whole campaign, like the Ebony in particular, is like, "Oh, are you tired of these fake ads that are nothing like the real game?" Oh, well, you should try this one. It's exactly like, but it's always like a really bad voiceover dub of a person playing the game really badly. And oh. like, I think the whole point is to like get you to be like, oh, well, I could do that. Like these people are dumb. I could, I could do this better. I'm like, I could do it. But like I could, but like, I don't want to, cause the game doesn't look good. It doesn't look fun. <laughs> right. uh, yeah. Yeah. I, uh, yeah, that's, that's the other catch with a lot of these like in app, you know, or these like app store yeah. games is there, you know, a lot of them now I've seen that there's, uh, like idle games. So yeah. it's like you set up a thing and then it's, it's you're just supposed to let it run kind of in the background. Um, which I kind of don't understand the, the purpose of that. Cause like, that's another one where it's like, isn't the point for me to play your game? Like this, this falls in line with the energy aspect yep. or like the, the thing is like, isn't, isn't the whole point for me to to get in and play your game and enjoy it. Like, I feel like the the app game world has been taken over by people who are wanting to make a quick buck instead of people that want to make good games. I mean, basically, like, you look at most mobile games and they feel like they're, like, 100% made by someone who has never played a game and possibly never had fun in their life. Ever. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, what what is even the point? Like, it just makes me want to just throw all of my devices into the trash and just pick up a book. Uh, just Ron Swanson style, throw, throw everything into the <laughs> into the dumpster. Which I did pick up a new book this morning. Uh, oh, literally yeah. Literally yeah. just this morning. Because um, I, I had finished, uh, we talked about Ghostland in a recent episode. It, is it we felt did. relevant to our, our haunting series that we did. Uh, and I had picked up another uh, kind of spooky seeming book called The Book Eaters. Uh, so I'm, I'm very intrigued. Very intrigued. I'm only a couple chapters in this morning, but uh, so far very well written. Uh, enjoying that. Um, but I actually, 
I watched a couple of movies this past uh, past weekend. Uh, oh, do you tell without uh, without being required to? <laughs> oh, hey, uh, that's always fun watching movies for fun. I love to do it. Um, so I got I let my curiosity get the better of me, and uh, I watched the the first of the three sequels to Hell House LLC. Uh, <laughs> you know, the one, of course, being still in in production, but uh, there's there's three that have been released. Hell House. Uh, Two and three. Uh Hell House LLC two, the Abaddon Hotel. Uh, the Abaddon. Consists of a, a little bit of reused footage from, from the original, as happens with found footage sequels. Um, but then also includes clips from a very poorly green screened uh, like news talk program. Uh oh, and then boy. some uh, some on-site footage from within the house. That again, like really seriously leaves the question, like, how do they get this? But also like goes out of the way to answer it badly. Uh, and without, I mean, there's nothing really to spoil here, but without, I, there's no, with, nobody cares about this movie. <laughs> without spoiling anything for someone who might happen to like want to watch this earnestly, um, it's the house. The house is sending oh. the tapes to people. <laughs> the house where the ghosts we made along the way. Yeah, the, <laughs> <laughs> the real ghosts were the friends we killed along the way. Um, oh, we do get to meet R. Mitchell, the uh, the last surviving member of the documentary crew from the first movie. Okay. Uh, and he's a weenie. <laughs> Aw, Mitchell Weenie. <laughs> Aw, that's a shame. But then uh, completely flipping the, the opposite direction as far as uh, quality goes. I watched Prey. And have, oh, have you seen yeah. that? Yeah, I did. So, I saw, yeah, the weekend it came out. Oh, my yeah. God. So, like, I was never a huge, huge fan of the Predator series. Um, I mean, I saw the first two yeah. and called it a day. I, I yeah. think I've seen most of them because I've seen the, the original Predator movies and then I've seen the Aliens vs. Predator movies, uh, which yeah, yeah. I think is a really fascinating concept, especially like uh, I, there was, a I think, maybe a trilogy of novels um, that kind of introduced some of the AVP lore uh, years and years ago. And I read the first one, really interesting, the whole idea that the Predator are a species that basically breed the xenomorphs to then go and hunt and like that's their ritual of like proving themselves really interesting concept uh not always particularly well executed on film but that's just the nature of things uh um, yeah but this idea of, like taking it like way back in time you know if you you know several hundred years to the, you know, the great plains and being focused around the, the comanche tribe uh in in this movie and in particular the uh, the young girl who's you know, setting to prove herself. Like I just, I loved the whole story. It was, it was beautifully filmed. There was, you know, there was some minor like, eh, like you could have done that better, but like not enough really for me to like pick apart. Like that's, a, it's a strong recommend for me if they, for anyone who's into that type of movie. That like the, the sci-fi thriller horror crossover. Yeah, you know, I I really enjoyed uh, that movie, but I I agree. You know, uh, Amber Mid Thunder is amazing oh, she's so in good. the movie. So good. My biggest complaint about the movie though was that she spends the majority of it just getting the absolute piss beaten out of her, mm -hmm. like just slapped around the whole movie. And I'm like, she's supposed to be this like really great hunter, but like just constantly is getting smacked around. Like it, it kind of like lost me a little bit. Cause I was like, the whole idea was that like, she's trying to prove that she's just as good as these other male hunters. Mm -hmm. Yet she keeps losing up until the very end. And I'm like, I guess like it's a hero's journey type thing maybe. Yeah. But I was like, I feel like she should win at least once or twice. Like, cause it kind of feels like she's proving their point. Not, not that I think that, but like, they're like, you can't do this. And then she almost dies twice yeah. and they have to come rescue her. And I'm like, well, so you can't do this. Like what? It's like they, they they lean a little bit too much on the trope of like the young wannabe warrior who's unproven and is brash and like, right. Like, you know, has to learn a lesson in humility before they can like truly become a great hunter or something like that. Like, that lesson's a little bit lost in the way that they they treat her character. Uh, I agree with you on that. Um, I do think it's really interesting that like in the the fight where or the scene where they they fight the like the mountain lion or whatever it is the the big cat and like you know she yeah. she comes up with the plan to like lure it up into the tree and fight it there. You actually see. Just before, like, she falls and blacks out, you see her stab the thing with her spear. 
And then later on, her brother brings her home, goes back and like kills the cat and brings it back and does this whole thing where like he pretends that like he's the one who killed it. But then later he admits like, no, that was, that really was you. Like you, your plan worked, you weakened it. I went back and finished it off. And I like, I liked that because a, a big part of that was it, like kind of demonstrating, oh, look, she wasn't ready. I had to rescue her. But like, really that was him yeah. being disingenuous. So like, no, like we actually did this and I just, I, I made myself look good by, you know, taking credit for her efforts. Uh, and like that, that revelation was very satisfying because I saw her stab the thing. And I'm like, there's no way that she just fell out of the tree and blacked out and it didn't kill her. Right. It, it just wouldn't chomp her up. Yeah. 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 I, that, that was another great example though of, of that sort of thing. Cause like she still fails, like she failed the task successfully. Yeah. That was, <laughs> you know, like that's kind of, that was like my frustration is she constantly failed the task successfully. <laughs> An unknown error Up until the occurred. very end. <laughs> An unknown error has occurred, right. You know, up until the very end. Uh, but I did, I, you know, I'm not big into the Predator lore, you know, and I, I watched the Predator movies, you know, probably back closer to when they came out. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to say when they came out because I was like four, but closer to sure. when they were released. And the gun that she ends up getting in the end is featured in the first and second Predator movie, apparently. Oh. That is that is a thing that is, like, carried on throughout it. I guess they find the gun or the Predator has the gun, like, in a ship or something in, like, one or two. I'm not sure. But I, I saw a thing where they were like, this gun was in the original Predator movies, and it was kind of like an origin story for the gun as well. That's cool. I, I like when movies will do that and create this, like, in-universe lore that, like, is super subtle. Like, you have to know... Uh, like the, the finer details of the entire franchise to pick up on it. But if you do, like it's, it's great fan service without being like over the top in your face about it. Um, Oh, you mean uh, Anakin Skywalker uh, building C-3PO uh, type? I have no idea what you Cause mean. Because that, <laughs> that, to me, I was like, what? Yep. What? Yeah, what? That's, that's... You mean C-3PO and R2-D2 hung out with Obi-Wan Kenobi for like the better part of 20 years? And then he's like, I don't know who the hell this droid is mm -hmm. the next time we see him. Mm -hmm. Like, hmm. Mm, yeah. There's, I don't know. There's a lot of... A little a lot of problems with that franchise. <laughs> uh, I got a lot of problems with you people. They're apparently making a 10, uh, Star Wars Episode 10, and it is going to take place after the events of Rey and Kylo Ren, but apparently it's not going to be about any of those people. Yo, didn't they promise so it is Jedi's, that they would end else. with nine? Did, weren't we assured that this was going to be I don't, it? Because like it really I, so fucking I'll needs to be. I'll say that I don't it. think <laughs> I don't think it's actually an episode ten, but it is a Star Wars movie that takes place after those events. Mm. So it may not necessarily be a ten, but it is another Star Wars movie. But it is not about Rey or Kylo Ren or the Skywalkers. Apparently, it's it's its own thing. I'm hoping it's the the four sensitive kids from that uh, the casino world. I mean, that would be interesting. Like that would be cool. As you are fond of saying, there are a lot of stories to tell in that world that are just being completely left on the table in favor of some, ignored. some really some conscious decisions on the part of the uh, the Disney team. Yeah, I you know it, it comes down to the you know it's the why take a chance when we know that people will come out to see Skywalker. You know, like people will come to see things they're familiar with. Like if we said. Here's Star Wars, but it has nothing to do with the Skywalkers. It's not anything to do with anybody you've ever seen before as a completely brand new character in a completely different part of the galaxy, not related to Skywalker uh, at all. I feel like they're they're like afraid to do it. I think they're they're afraid. They don't want to take the chance that that they're going to try this new IP in the Star Wars world of something unfamiliar and then people aren't going to like it. Mm -hmm. That's, that's my theory. I feel like Star Trek is the same way. You know, we talked about this before where I feel like they're kind of in that same vein in terms of the movies and stuff like that. It's like, well, you know, you know, the line of Kirk, right? Yeah. It's, it's the line of Kirk. Even uh, the next generation falls in line with the line of Kirk as does deep space and that, you know, the, they're in that same sort of, it's the enterprise, it's, basically the enterprise. It's, it's interesting too, because we, we did talk about this recently and I think that they're, they're willing to take some more chances with the, the shows, but it's true that they've never really stepped out of line with the films of the franchise. And it's always been 
uh, like an existing crew that they bring on for a, a feature length. Yep. Or. And it's the Enterprise. And, and it's the Enterprise. Or it's a retake on a previous existing crew with the, you know, the JJ yep. verse, the, the Kelvin verse, uh, which I thought was interesting because, you know, as much as it drew ire, like that was a, a fun way to tell new stories uh, without being completely beholden to the original. And they tried that and I think it worked really well. A lot of people didn't and shit on it and yeah. we'll probably never see it again. And like, it yeah, I mean, that's another me. one you just, you just kind of, I mean, at this point you just got to start over so that, you know, you can win back people that maybe were into Star Trek, but didn't like what they saw, which is fine. It's okay for them to not like it, it but as, you know, as much as, uh, what's his name can be hit or miss. Um, I kind of want to watch the Orville just with the notion that yeah. it like it technically theoretically is a n- new Star Trek story, just not right. not actually in the Star Trek universe, but it really is a, a, like a Star Trek story in like how much of an homage it is to the franchise. Uh, from what everyone has told me, like basically after like after season one, which was more leaning into McFarland. McFarland, okay. yes, Seth yeah. McFarland. Like, yeah. why can't I remember his name? Uh, more leaning into his, you know, weird humor. Uh, but I guess later on, like, finds its footing and becomes more of a, a serious space drama. And I'm like, I'm, I'm here for that. So I got to give it a yeah, shot. Yeah, I mean, sometime. that's that's what uh, Casey from the Super Pod Hero Cast and Where No Mom Has Gone Before has said. That the first season feels very like you're the Family Guy guy. Yeah. Hey, do do all the the jokey things. And then after that, there was kind of like, okay, you're you're gonna leave me alone now. I'm going to go off and make the actual Star Trek thing that I actually wanted to do and uh, the Star Trek homage that I wanted to do. And now season two and on apparently takes itself a lot more serious and gets away from that. Like I got to do the, I got to do the jokey joke, yeah. you know? Uh, so when I heard, I haven't watched the series um, at all, but this is the general consensus from people is, is that's what's, that's what's happening. <laughs> Reporting <laughs> for duty. <laughs> Oh, uh, maybe maybe we should uh, maybe we should uh, have a bunch of us watch and discuss it sometime. I like this plan. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, speaking of getting together and discussing things, um, we have a brand new episode coming out. But here's the catch: which brand new episode are we teasing, Caleb? <laughs> we don't even know. <laughs> we don't. We, well, uh, so we we have a really interesting month teed up for the month of November. We are Night Shift Media, Night Shift Radio is launching a, a brand new show uh, coming up called the the Fourth Pillar of Play, in which uh, our new hosts Josh and Talon uh, get together and talk about all about tabletop game design, basically like yeah. how to run a really good campaign, uh, as opposed to a lot of the the wonderful shows out there that are people playing games or talking about games. This is all about like how to make your gaming experience, and you know, we've we've heard their pilot episode you know we've, we've sat and talked with them obviously it would be really weird if we were releasing a show that we didn't do any research on. We didn't even listen to. Uh, <laughs> really really into it uh and we think that you know, fans of, of that uh genre of play are, are going to be really into this uh we're going to bring them on for an episode uh to do a film that they requested uh called call the conqueror uh in the uh in the franchise of conan uh which of course inspired a lot of the the tabletop gaming that people know today dungeons and dragons specifically uh but then uh, the rest of the month is some some hand-picked items that i found uh, uh that i'm really excited about of course uh bringing back to uh to, to my purest passion in life which is nick cage films uh we're gonna we're gonna get a couple <laughs> of those uh, and then uh, and we're going to get uh, one that I think is, is really interesting uh, in that it, it blurs the lines between imagination and reality and play versus war uh, and whatnot. It's, it's called I Declare War. It's streaming on Hulu. Check out the trailer. Uh, so we've, we've got a few of those coming up the, this month. Some really, really, really interesting stuff. Uh, but yeah, as of right now, we don't know which episode is coming up next. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it might be called The Conqueror. Uh, depends on when when we post this episode. So it might be called The Conqueror coming out this Sunday. It might be uh, Season, uh, season of, of the, the Witch. witch. Uh, a, uh, an eleven year old Nicolas Cage film that I somehow had not seen until this weekend, uh, and we, we rectify that, and uh, you'll find out if we if we rue or lament it. 
<laughs> uh, but you know, the best and easiest way to find out which one is next is, of course, subscribing, right? Mm-hmm. So if you haven't hit subscribe or follow on your podcast player of choice, make sure to do that. If you haven't hit subscribe here on YouTube, make sure to do that as well. You'll get notified every Thursday when we drop brand new bonus episodes where we talk about modern whatever sort of thing we're talking about in the entertainment world. You know, we recently wrapped up reviewing all of She-Hulk. Uh, you know, we are looking forward to bringing back the Super Pod Hero cast later for secret invasion um which is coming out in february Mm -hmm. so you know there'll be a lot of things that that'll be talking about you know we we spent a lot of this episode talking about uh apps uh you know uh video games for your phones uh so it's it's kind of whatever is happening but Mm -hmm. so yeah make sure to hit that subscribe button definitely hit it over on your podcast player of choice and you know leave a rating and review while you're there because that's super helpful for us because you know, we like other people to listen to our show, too. We do, we do. And uh, they can do so for uh, 20 gems, uh, which can be purchased in the store for four ninety nine. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but for seven ninety nine. dollars uh, <laughs> So, uh, yeah, so thanks a lot for listening, guys, and watching. And, of course, as always, make sure to share with 100,000 of your closest Predator friends. And they'll, uh, they'll get to find out alongside you what episode we're doing next. because it's a mystery mystery. all right thanks a lot for joining us everyone and we will see you on sunday